Yeah, I'm gonna do a vlog now. So in the morning, I I cooked some egg fried rice for the first time for my family. It went well before I I tried to stir, stir some stuff and then the oil was just it was just killing me. So it was a very very painful cooking experience. And then once I finished cooking that, I went. I went outside to see if I could find any helium balloons but I couldn't find them in co-op and then I asked co-op and then they said to go to the Lidl in Woolerton like I didn't I wasn't sure I was going to find them there so I called the card factory and then they said they had the balloons in store so but it was too sunny so I waited an hour I went back home ate, ate the egg fried rice and now I'm waiting at the bus stop to get to Victoria Centre then walk to Card Factory to buy the overpriced balloons and then I brought my tripod to take the photo gonna take the photo, hopefully it's not too sunny otherwise it'll be way too dark I will be way too dark anyway Wait, we're gonna buy, buy the balloons at Card Factory we're gonna take the picture in City Centre and hopefully it'll look good and then I need to go back home by bus I hate, I hate going by bus bro I love cycling yeah then, then I'll go, go go home my brother's laughing at me right now it's very sad it's very sad why are you laughing at me fam? it's like you're telling a story I'm telling a story anyways anyways so I'll go back home and then I'm actually missing my virtual work experience with PwC right now. It started at 9 a.m. but I'm missing it because this is more important, possibly. So yeah, I'll go back home, then I'll go to the university, do the virtual work experience, or try to catch up on as much as I can. And then I have a meeting at 5. Okay, we've just arrived in Victoria Centre. Now we're going to enter inside and hopefully find Card Factory because I don't know where it is. So we currently have the balloons now. They cost £22.50 with the weight on so they don't fly away. Now the problem is I didn't expect there to be all these attractions here at the moment. So we need to find a place where to take the picture where it's not too sunny so the background isn't blown out and I'm not in silhouette. So we're currently looking for that location and then we'll take the photo. So we just finished recording or trying to well, we just try we just finished trying to take some pictures with these balloons. It is like infinitely harder than I thought it would be. But we got some all white pictures and now I think we're gonna go back home now. Are we gonna go home? Yeah, so we just finished taking pictures, did a lot of embarrassing ourselves because we love doing that. And now we're going to go home. We're going to bring these on the bus, yeah. I'm not sure how that's going to work out because these things are massive. But I think that's, that's the end of the photo shoot. We've been here for like, what is it, for so long, at least 20 minutes. It's really crazy. So yeah, bye. See you later. Oh, we're walking so close to it. Do you want to be in the video? Why? Because you'll, you'll be famous. No. I managed to make it inside the bus with all the balloons. It was very hard to get inside, by the way. But we made it inside, and now we're going to get home with all the balloons in the bus. And then I'll get changed or just you know, freshen myself. And then make my way to the University of Nottingham to catch up on all the work experience sessions I actually missed. We made it. We, we probably made, thinks this is a key. We made key. it outside the bus. And now we're walking home. But two people have said happy birthday to me, okay? I'm carrying 100 written in balloons. How do they think I'm 100 years old? In blue, it's golden. So the first guy said, oh, it's your 100th birthday. H how do you look so young? And he, and he was at least 50 years old, right? So it was, it was a funny joke. But this time, it was someone my age who said happy birthday to me. So yeah, very strange. 
I made it! I am so sweaty right now, guys. You won't, you can't even believe it. It's so sweaty. I wasn't even cycling that fast, but oh my goodness. I'm unbelievably sweaty. Just with a shirt on, no jacket or anything. Dude, I am, oh my, look, look. What the, oh. Dude, I, oh my, I don't, I don't have a, I don't know. I don't have a spare shirt or anything. Anyways, so I, as soon as I arrived home, I realised, whoa, it's, um, it's very close to Jamaat time, 1.30, so I quickly performed wudu and then made it to my local masjid to pray Jamaat, duhul of Jamaat. And, oh yeah, I have a story. So while I was cycling here, there was a father and his son cycling in front of me and the father was teaching his son how to ride his bike and it, he was very he was very good at teaching okay he was very kind and patient etc so i waited behind him and then he saw me behind so he was like oh do you want to overtake i was like no i was admiring you, your teaching it's, it looks very fun and then he said <laughs> and then he said um no it's actually very very hard <laughs> and he looked he looks so tired bro he looks so tired yeah, and then after I passed him, I said, "Oh, I hope you have a nice day." And then he returned the greeting, which was very sweet. So, yeah, I think those types of interactions happen like every once in a while. They're not that rare, but also not that common. If you just if you just look at people, make eye contact with them, and just you know initiate that greeting, then you can imagine how many nice interactions you will have in your lifetime. And you'll meet so many cool people, so try to do that. Oh yeah. Okay, never mind. I thought I didn't tell you about the birthdays. But you know, I'm actually quite an awkward person. Especially on camera. Most people are awkward on camera, but you don't realise. People think I'm confident. Just because I'm confident in real in real life doesn't mean I'm good at structuring my answers and speaking in front of a camera. As in I'm talking to no one right now. But I need to get some work done because I'm I've nearly missed more than half the day. No, I've, I've nearly missed the entire day of the virtual work experience with PWT. So I will do that and I'll catch you later. Nice to meet Joel and James. I'm currently a team lead with an operates financial crime pillar. Comes from the get-go. Things like business and maths. So that's basically where it stemmed from. Hello. So I prepared my USB streaming cable. And I, I was planning to use this camera as a as a webcam and a microphone because I don't have I, I don't actually I don't actually have a camera on this laptop nor does it have a microphone so when I join webinars and they need to like see or hear me I need to bring my my camera or a different laptop to to allow them to hear me so I joined the meeting and then after a few minutes I was like hmm this guy's not turning up and then I got the message. He told me, don't join the Zoom link as he's running late. So I'm, I'm not sure if, if it's still on or if it isn't on anymore. But I'm going to be waiting here. Researching some stuff about other things that I may or may not tell you yet. Because I like keeping things a surprise. But yeah, so I need to catch up on some stuff with the PwC. I want to do the the programming thing they sell us. So I'm going to show you what that actually looked like. It's on Kaggle. Kaggle is it's used for machine learning and data science. And they built a Jupyter notebook for us to use. Let me sign in and then I'll show you. Okay, I am back. So this is Kaggle. I copied the shopping trends notebook that they provided us with from PwC. So I copied that and they have lots of different tasks. For you to learn about and analyze the shopping trend data set. Yeah, that's what I was supposed to do while I was walking around city center with balloons in the shape of a hundred. You know, I actually lost the, the number one balloon while going home. So I was putting my camera in my bag. And since all the balloons were like, they were like entangled with my camera bag strap around me. So while I was putting my camera in, it like 
It cut one of the strings I was holding one of the balloons. And then I was like, what was that sound? And then, and then, I, look, and then I looked around me, right? And then I saw the balloon just floating away in the sky. And by that point, it was, it was too late. I, I couldn't retrieve it. Very sad. Very sad. Anyways, I wanted to tell you something else. Yeah, so. Since it's been a hundred days since the start of this challenge, let's talk about what I've actually accomplished since I started this challenge. I haven't even told you why I started this challenge, so... Let me tell you about that. So there was this one day, well, it's been happening a lot over the past few years, but there was just this one day where I woke up and then I went on my phone and then I just, I just scrolled through social media or, and watched movies from the very moment I woke up until the time I slept that night and it was just it was crazy at that point because I had I had so much like EPQ and other work to catch up on and then I just threw this 24 hours in the bin like I completely threw it in the bin I did absolutely nothing that day and I was like what is going on where did all that time go because while I was, while I was on my phone, while I was procrastinating and wasting my time, I was like, I was telling myself, oh, I have, I still have a few more hour, few more hours, left, with the rest of the day, I can just do that stuff then, and then, a few hours later, it just the time disappeared, and I realized, what have I done? What was I just doing for the past few hours? Where did that time go? And I realized that was how I was living for so many days. It's basically how I've been living for the past few years of my life. And I did not want to live a life where I didn't, I felt like I had no control over myself and my own, my own body. So, I started this series to document every single moment of my life. Not not the simple things like going to the toilet or or drinking water, but you know like the like what am I doing every half an hour or every hour? What am I doing in the morning or before I get to sleep? How early am I staying up? Stuff like that. And I wanted to doc to document every part of my life so I knew what what I was doing with my time was I wasting it if I was wasting it then I'd be able to you know publicize it and show show everyone what I was actually doing so yeah I created this daily vlog to you know motivate me to publicize all of my actions so that I'm less incentivized to do things that are bad and things that will get me nowhere because if you know that all your actions are going to be seen by the rest of the world and like plastered on your digital footprint for the rest of your life, then you'll try not to do anything bad, right? Well, I'd hope so anyway. So that was the plan. And also, in the hopes that I become successful someday in the future, inshallah, then this series will help anyone else see like the behind the scenes of what I was actually doing every day what it what it takes to you know get to wherever i go later on you know i feel so nervous when i'm recording these things to be honest i, I i've won several awards in public speaking i even have a qualification in public speaking yeah i still find it hard to talk in front of a camera it doesn't actually make sense to be honest I'm still waiting for him to join the waiting room, but in that time, I will tell you about what, what I've accomplished over these 100 days. So, recently, 
me and my friends over the month of June, we we ran a marathon over the month of June. So we ran five kilometers Saturday, Sunday for four weeks. And we ended up running, so most of the days we ran six kilometers because <laughs> the rest of the group, they wanted to run longer. I don't know why. These guys have never run in their life, okay? And they wanted to go from running 5k, which is already already a tremendous task, to running 6 kilometers. I can't believe it. So we ran 6 kilometers most days. And ended up run, we ran like 45 to 50k over that, over that June month. It was absolutely incredible. And I, I got, I got, what is it? I, I got the title of head boy at my school. And that's all thanks to one of my classmates who messaged me a very heartwarming email like two days before the application deadline. And then I was like, okay, I really want this position. I just didn't realize it yet. So over those two days, I, I stayed up like, I stayed up past midnight writing my application, okay. And then I submitted it. And then I had to prepare for an interview, which was just a few days later. And I had no idea what I was going to say, okay? Because I had just written, I just, I just found out that I wanted to apply a few days before. Anyways, after the, after the interview and finding out that apparently my interview went well, I, I, got the, I got the position. And then after some like last minute decisions with the Islamic Society, I went from being the lead regarding marketing to the president of the Islamic Society. I don't know, don't ask me how this stuff happens. It's just people, it was, it was a very confusing time for me. I did not expect to become head boy, nor did I expect to become the president of the Islamic Society. Anyways, after those two things happened, I, I had a cybersecurity internship at Fraser's Group because of the hackathon that I won the previous year. And then I'm currently doing my work experience, my virtual work experience with PwC. Last week I had a summer, resi summer residential with Unique at the University of Oxford. And then that, that Friday, that same Friday, I went to Farnborough Air Show, which is, which is a eight hour, eight plus hour journey there and back by train. And I went with Zihan. So yeah, that was very fun. Let me see what else. Yeah, I do, I do running regularly now. I go to the Saturday park runs at Willerton Hall to run 5k and I'm slowly improving my time. I hope to hit like uh, 4.30 average pace minute per kilometer, which will be really exciting for me, yeah. I've been writing lots of LinkedIn posts. I've been looking into uh, some sort of like entrepreneurship business ventures. I've also been doing a lot of research in terms of US universities. I've been participating in AP STEM. You don't need to know everything I've done, right? I hope not anyway. But I've done a lot of things in the past 100 days. And I remember when it was at the very start of the journey and I was like, these days are going fast. And then now I was just, I was just looking back on all the things that I've done. And wow, a hundred days is a lot. You can do a lot in a hundred days, okay? So allocate your time from now. This is your day one. So you have a hundred days from now to absolutely change your life. And trust me, in a hundred days, you can do a lot, okay? You can do a lot. Before the a hundred days, I was, I was always at home wasting my time, not being able to work or do anything. And now I'm always going out, meeting new people, mentoring at boot camps, doing all these cool events, going to work, finding all these opportunities. And that's all because you need to take that leap of faith and believe in yourself, okay? So, in a hundred days, you'll be able to conquer the world. You just need to believe that. And although I've done so many things in these 100 days, I still feel that I haven't improved that much. Because I still don't sleep enough. I'm still not consistent with a lot of things in my life. 
So it takes a long time, guys. It takes so much consistent but little dedication. Regardless of whether you're not feeling good, whether you're not feeling motivated, you have to do it every single day. And it will be hard. I promise it will be so hard. It's so much more difficult than it looks in these daily vlogs. To be honest, a lot of these daily vlogs, I cut out all the like mentally exhausting parts of my life because dude, with the amount of things I have to do, it's, it really takes a toll. It's, it's so difficult. The amount of pressure I'm in with all of these different things I'm pursuing, US applications, EPQ, four A-levels, it's, it's really hard. But I truly think if I can do it, then if you, if anyone else can do it, then anyone else, you just need that dedication. Slowly, slowly, and bit by bit, you can you can go from being a couch potato to being whoever you want to be. Honestly, you just need to take that first step. Even when I, even when I was sick, even when I was feeling so unwell that I, I could barely get out of my bed. I was making daily vlogs. Every single day. Even when I had two hours of sleep, I was making daily vlogs. The dedication that you need to get where you want to be in life is insane. You will be crying some days, okay? The amount of days that were just like, I want to stop. So I think... For the for the start of the challenge, every single day I, I wanted to I wanted to stop man. It was it was excruciating the amount of pain, the amount of mental like exhaustion exhaustion that I was in every single day, every morning, every day when I when I came back from school I was like, I don't want to edit a daily vlog. I don't wanna I don't wanna film this anymore. I don't want to keep doing this. But if I think about it, if I, you know, these comments, they really keep me going. Just a few days ago, I was like, when I get to day 100, maybe that's when I'll start. Because I feel like I have more control over my life now. I can, I'm not a couch potato anymore. I don't just stay at home doing nothing all day. I go out, I talk to people, I can do work. And I don't need someone else to to tell me to do those things. I can I can actually control my own body now. But then I was seeing these comments of people who who find my videos inspiring and people who want me to keep on going. And I also realized I'm not exactly where I want to be yet. I want to I want to sleep eight to nine hours a day, okay? I do not sleep enough. I want a consistent lifestyle. I want to I want to pray to the I want to pray at the masjid at least every day. I want to wake up for fajr on time consistently. There are so many different things that would benefit my life, whether it's becoming faster at running, whether it's doing all my coursework. So yeah, we all, we all have those goals, and I still have those goals even a hundred days later into this challenge. So I'm not sure when I'll stop, to be honest. So I thought I, w I thought I already would have stopped, <laughs> with the amount of with the amount of like mental mental effort it takes to just tell yourself to keep on going. I I genuinely thought I would have stopped by now, but I'm still here. I'm still doing this challenge, and I think. I think all of you can do this challenge too. So please take my daily vlogs as uh, as you know as a catalyst to your own your own transformation of your life. And I wish you all the best. Now, I'm not sure exactly what else I wanted to say in this little ramble that I'm on about. But the main message was that 
even after a hundred days, I still don't sleep enough. It, I find it hard to wake up. I, I, I still find I'm still under so much pressure. The amount, the amount of days that I still have now where I want to give up on everything, it still happens, guys. It still happens. I want to I want to be in a healthy balance between all of the different things I'm doing. And it takes a lot more than a hundred days. But even with a hundred days, you can do so much. You can, you, you will change your life in a hundred days, I promise. Because I have changed my life in a hundred days. And if I can do it, you guys can too. I think I'm going to end it there. If if that guy doesn't join the meeting anytime soon, then I'm Okay, so he just told me he'll he'll join the meeting in a few minutes. So I'll do the meeting. I'll probably create a LinkedIn post for the unique, you know, summary post for my summer residential at Oxford last week. And then I'll I'll end it there. I don't want to keep you guys any longer. I'm so thankful that you stayed for so long for watching me ramble. I really need to get better at summarizing my thoughts, man. I need to write a script. No. Okay. Yeah, I've been talking for too long, man. Too long. And then I'll go home. And then I need to edit day 99. And then tomorrow I will edit this video. And that means I'll post day 100 two days after posting my actual video. I mean, after, after recording the actual video. I wish you all the best with your journey and I'll see you in the next video. Love you guys. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Many of you don't realize how long I actually spend editing these daily vlogs every day. So, I spend up to two hours every single day to, to film the vlog, edit the vlog, write the description for the vlog, and then upload it to all three social media channels. So I spend, let's say, two hours every single day, and it's been a hundred days, okay? So I've spent roughly 200 hours on this series. And will I say it's worth it? Was it worth it? I mean, it's, it was a lot better than staying at home and doing nothing. So I think it was worth it. And a big reason why I want to keep doing this is because it's a way of, it's a way of like reflecting and storing my memories with other people. I get to include other people in my vlogs. I get to store the the memories that I have with them. And it's such a nice way of just going on like any day and you'll be like, Oh, what did I do on this day? Or who did I talk to? Who did I meet? Where did I go to? So yeah, that's, that's why you should do daily vlogs, so you can cherish your memories with your friends and look back on them whenever you want in the future. But it really takes a long time, bro. I, I spend 10-20 minutes at least just on the timestamps, so if I didn't have to do timestamps, then that's, that's up to half an hour saved. Yeah, it takes so much time to edit these daily vlogs, man, every day. Every day. But I hope it's worth it. I really do. And I think it is. So, I'm going to keep on going. Also, one last thing. Don't let me feed you a false fantasy, okay? This is hard. Doing so many things. And... Let's say vlogging your life. It doesn't have to be vlogging your life. But doing so many things and chasing your ambitions, it's going to be difficult. You'll make sacrifices, whether that's partying. I don't do parties, guys. Don't invite me to a party. I'm not going to attend it. But let's say socializing or doing events, for example. You're going to have to sacrifice some social time and gaming. Just don't game. Unless you're going to be a professional gamer, then just don't even mess with games. So, Or, or maybe if you're spending time with your family, then, then you can use games. But 
No, just don't even try with video games. They're such a waste of time. You're gonna have to sacrifice these things if you if you really want to chase your ambition, if you want to get far. And you'll have days where you really want to stop. But you need to know that if you keep on going, then everything will be worth it. Use me as an example. At the very start, I wasn't really doing anything with my time. Now, a hundred days down the line, I've started to go running. I've started to take care of not only my my physical health, but also my, my mental health, my spiritual health, my religion. Once you start to look after yourself, instead of spending so much time with other people, and prioritizing others above yourself, then everything will be so much better. And of course I still have so much love for other people, but don't let others dictate your own self-worth and self-help. Do not sabotage your health for other people. Yeah, that's my biggest advice. Before this challenge, I had no, no self-confidence, self-esteem. But now, I can confidently talk in front of a camera. <laughs> I can do embarrassing things without being embarrassed. And I have some sort of self-worth now. I believe in you, but most of all, you should believe in yourself. Because there is no one that's going to help you more than you are in changing your own life. And that is a quote that I just came up with, but I hope it helps you along your journey. <laughs> oh, I'm so good at waffling. I am so good at waffling.